Hello, I'm Marian Nessel. I'm the Paulette Goddard Professor of Nutrition Food Studies and Public Health at New York University and the author of several books, among them Food Politics, Safe Food, um, Why Calories Count, and I have a new book coming out in September called Soda Politics. I've been at this for a very, very long time now. And what I've seen over the years is really exciting because we're in the middle of a food movement and the food movement is making it clear how food corporations are influencing what people are eating and what has to be done in order to get food corporations to stop the bad influence that they're having on people's food habits. The food corporations work exactly the same way that the cigarette industry works and the oil and gas industry for that matter. First of all, they have a playbook and their playbook says, first, you discredit the science. Second, you attack the messenger. Third, when no, those kinds of things don't work, you put out as much disinformation and misinformation as you can, and then you lobby behind the scenes to make sure that no federal agency says anything that will suggest eating less of your products. I got interested in how the food industry influences what we eat because I went to a cigarette conference and I watched people who were advocating against smoking show slide after slide after slide of marketing of cigarettes to young children. And I came away from that conference thinking we should be doing that for Coca-Cola because it is obvious that the Joe Camel of that day was influencing children to start smoking. And it was equally obvious that Coca-Cola and PepsiCo and other sugary drink providers were influencing children to drink their products. And these kids were drinking a lot of sugary drinks. I've also tracked the meat industry and looked at what the meat industry has done for decades to try to get Americans to eat more meat. I think we eat plenty of meat. I'm not a total vegetarian. I think it's fine for people to eat reasonable amounts of meat in their diets, but my idea of reasonable and other people's idea may not be quite the same. And the meat industry has lobbied for decades to make sure that the dietary guidelines don't say a word about eating less meat. And here they are back again in the 2015 dietary guidelines. Well, the dairy industry is an industry like all others in that it wants people to eat more of its products, regardless of the effects of their products on health. And here again, I think dairy foods have a place in healthy diets, but they have a place. They shouldn't be the basis of them. We know that the healthiest diets are plant-based and that people who eat fruits, vegetables, whole grains are healthier than people who don't. Um, and that the basis of healthful diets is largely plant-based. Um, the dairy industry fights that. Uh, it has worked f also for decades to make sure that no government agency ever says anything about the amount of saturated fat in dairy products or anything else in dairy products, hormones, antibiotics, or anything else. Um, and so they too are an industry that is trying to get people to eat more of their products. That's what food companies do, it's their job. I was just getting interested in nutrition in the, in the mid 1970s and one of the big events of the 1970s was the issuance of the Dietary Goals for the United States by the Senate Select Committee on Nutrition and Human Needs chaired by George McGovern. That report which recommended eating more plant foods and less meat, dairy, and processed foods containing a lot of salt and a lot of sugar was the most controversial thing you could ever imagine. The, it was met with an absolute uproar by the meat industry, by the dairy industry, by the egg industry, by any industry that made anything with sugar in it. And those industries went right to Congress. Congress held hearings. And as a result of those hearings, the committee had to change the wording of the dietary goals from eat less to choose lean or choose diets um, that are uh, moderate in sugars and salt and that kind of thing. So that's where the euphemisms that we now see in dietary guidelines and in federal dietary advice came in because no federal agency can say eat less of anything without bringing on the wrath of the 
industry that's affected by that. And today we see a lot of journalists writing reports um, that contradict that information, that cast doubt on the science, and that are making um, them very popular and very well known for writing r reports about nutrition that are contrary to common wisdom. And as I always teach students, anytime somebody tells you everything you knew about nutrition is wrong, you really ought to be a little skeptical.